Great Smoky from uh, the Appalachian Trail. Okay, so I've got everything set up here in the shack. Um, there's a few things going on here. First, I have my Linux laptop. This is a, an old uh, Asus Transformer Book T100. I think they go for like a hundred bucks on eBay. And it has, uh, it has an Intel chip. I think this is an Intel Atom chip, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, the Transformer book was kind of a unique model because you can push this button and then the display detaches and becomes a touch screen. But uh, this is not running Windows. This is running Fedora Linux because uh, at this point, Windows is no longer really supported on this machine. So uh, the nice thing about this machine is with the keyboard attached, it does have a USB A out and I have that running to a USB hub with a printer cable running to the back of the Yaesu FT891. And I've got a Sabrent USB sound card with a custom made, I think it's a six pin mini DIN to audio in and out jack. Uh, that cable, I think I got off of eBay a while back. But all of that runs back here to the 891. And, uh, also, I've got my BioNO uh, six amp hour battery running to a PowerWorks uh, precision watt meter and power analyzer. This just lets me see how much juice is still left in this battery based upon the voltages that it's putting out. And you can see that the 891 is drawing about one amp on receive here, which is normal for the 891 to power hog. And uh, there's a few settings in the 891 that are important to set. So let's go to uh, the menu here. And there's, there's a few things in here that I've set up. We're gonna be using single sideband to use Vera HF on the 891. Uh, it, it doesn't really, I mean, the 891 has a data, um, upper sideband mode, but with the way that RMS Express works, we're going to use single sideband. Uh, we're also setting the power to 60 uh, instead of the 400 watts. Most of the time I try to just see if I can make contact with lower power. Uh, and I also have, uh, like for CW, if I need to test my, um, my SWR, I have my key right here. Uh, where I can check the SWR on the radio. I couldn't use the dipole in the backyard because a storm came through, so I had to disconnect it, but I have an NFED half wave running through my attic, and I also have this. Uh, this is an MFJ9201 tuner that allowed me to get about a 1.5 to 1 SWR um, through the NFED half wave in the attic, which is totally contained uh, inside. So. No dangers of lightning there for me. Uh, but there's a few additional settings on the 891. I know this is tedious, but uh, just in case anybody is curious about what I've set up here, there's a couple of key things to set. I currently have the uh, automatic gain control set to these settings. I'm using fast for automatic gain control. There's also, let's see, um, here doesn't matter because that's all CW. The cat rate for cat control is set all the way to um, as high as it will go. So uh, 38,400 bits per second. Um, keep going down. Uh, the timeout timer is set at 1,000 milliseconds. And then let's see. We're not using an ATAS antenna. Uh, let's see, fan control is normal. And this is AM, this is CW, data, 
Um, the only thing about data that I'll say is that the PTT select is set to DAKY, and I found that to work. Um, I also have a data input select to the rear, so that may be important for cat control. Uh, the data uh, part of the band is set to upper sideband, although in this case we're not using data. So again, we're using single sideband. Um, let's see. Uh, for single sideband, these are the settings. I think most of these are just the defaults. So um, there's a low cut frequency, a high cut uh, frequency and slope. Uh, mic select, this one's important, 11-05. Uh, mic select is set to the rear because it's going to take input from that Sabrent USB sound card. Um, also, for single sideband, we've set the part of the band that we're using to upper sideband instead of auto. If I wanted to use this with the mic, I'd have to change this back to auto. But for right now, we're going to leave it set on, um, on upper sideband. And the PTT select I have set to DAKY, uh, just like for some of the other settings. And really... That should be most of it. We're not using equalization. Um, one thing I will say is that anytime I'm running data modes, I um, even if it's on um, single sideband, I'm actually gonna dial this back to 30. I don't know how much, even though I'm in a single sideband mode, I'd imagine this Vera HF modem is going to have a, a rather intense duty cycle uh, on the radio. So I'll just set that to 30 and then um, that way we know we're not exceeding any any limits for the radio. I don't like running more than about 30 watts um, for a, uh, a, a radio that um, is, is built to transmit about you know 100 watt single sideband because of the duty cycle it can burn out the finals and, and things if you're not careful. So, and that would be expensive and we don't want to do that. Uh, let's see, mic gain is all set to, in this case, mic gain is set to zero. I'm gonna set this to, I'm gonna leave that where it is. Um, actually, no, I'll set it to 15. Uh, this worked earlier and it must have been on zero. We'll try it on 15. Let's see what happens. All right, and so that is mostly it. I've got my squelch turned all the way down. So if I turn it this way, you can see it, it cuts out the sound. I'm gonna take the squelch totally out so that we can listen. And then there's a couple things we wanna do over here. So um, I will not walk you through the whole setup process for Linux. If you go to the WinLink website, you will notice that there is a link for installing RMS Express on Linux. And if you click that, there are links on K6 ETA's website, and these are very exhaustive. So I'd encourage you to go through here. Uh, there's links on exactly what commands to run. If you're familiar with the terminal, you will need to know how to run a Linux terminal to do this. But uh, I've already gone through all that. So I've set up WinLink. Um, I've also set up uh, wine and wine tricks on this machine. So let me just show you what I run. Um, I've got uh, a specific wine installation with RMS Express. So I'm gonna run that. And I'm also going to, in another window over here, um, I'm to process this other one. I'm also going to run the Vera HF modem. So I'll start that up and using Wine to run both those. So here's my HF modem. And uh, there's a couple of settings in here that I'll show you. Um, for the sound card, and uh, for some reason this, you know, uh, again, we're doing Linux and Wine with some stuff that's only supposed to work on Windows, but I'm going to set this to the input to the uh, USB audio device, the output 
to the USB audio device here, which is this, and we'll just uh, close this. And we can tell that we're getting um, sound into the modem here, so that's all good. So now, let's make a connection in Winlink. And what I'm going to do, I've got Vera HF Winlink selected. And I'm going to, let's see, I actually don't like how that modem looks. It looks like it's got too much input here. Okay, that looks better. I'm going to leave it on that. So, um, if it doesn't work, we'll try it again. But uh, I've only got a couple options there, so some of this will just be trial and error. So, let's start up a session. And all right, a couple of things I've done. I've specifically set my COM port, which is COM6 on 38400 baud which is the same setting that was on the radio. That's that uh, data transfer rate. Um, the way that you do that is you go into settings and radio setup and you select Yaesu FT891 as the radio model. I've specifically set COM6 and WINE to be associated with this um, Sabrent uh, US, or actually no, sorry, I'm saying that wrong. This printer cable, which I'm, I'm using for cat control, that is specifically set to COM6. And there are some Linux commands that you can run to do that. Um, I had to write a bash script. Uh, I actually didn't write it, I borrowed a bash script to just go through Linux and find all the connected USB devices and tell me what dev ports they were on uh, or what dev devices they were. You then go into wine and you make a an entry saying that com6 is equal to like slash dev slash ttty's0 if you're a linux head you know what that means um also i've got things set to enable rts and enable dtr and so you're not seeing things here this laptop is so like it was hiding on a shelf and it has a cracked screen and things and i actually put some packing tape over the screen to try and deal with the cracks. Again, this is an emergency setup, so uh, we'll see what happens. And then for serial port, you select FT891. It's a little strange, but hey, whatever. So that's just how WinLink is set up. So I've already done all this. So I'm going to close it. I don't need to update anything. And now um, I'm set to 7.083. I am on the right frequency here. What you'll notice is that, I don't know if you can see this, I'll try to get it. Um, I'll just uh, do it here. If I, if I want to switch channels, uh, let's see. I'll switch to this one and then switch back. So if I switch to that one, now you can see it's changed to 7.060 but that's not the one I want because that is not what I tuned up for. So I'll go back to channel selection. I'll go with this one. And let's try to make a connection. All right, keying up. SWR looks good. And let's see if I get a response here. Oh, that sounds good. I don't know if you heard it. Yep, sounds promising. Great, it's picked me up. I do not want to purchase this right now. This is an emergency radio. I'll deal with the slower speed. Great, it is 661 kilometers away from me. Calling out to W6IDS here. I'm 
This is in Richmond, Indiana. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So this is from an antenna that is inside of my attic. Um, and I'm running barefoot. I'm not running an amplifier or anything. Just uh, running straight out of my attic. If you can imagine if, if a natural disaster hit this area or something and I needed to dig out a radio and send an email to family, something like that, um, I can get out to Indiana from here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, SWR is still looking good over here. Keeping everything cool. And uh, I'm really delighted with this. To, to run Winlink like this, you would normally need, um, you know, some kind of a, a, a Windows machine to do it. This is truly, like, this is a laptop that was sitting on the shelf. I dug it out, I put Linux on it, removed Windows, and um, I've been able, through Wine, to run RMS Express, and that's pretty awesome. So, um, yeah, it looks like I, I didn't have any messages, but, uh, you know, connect, if you can connect with the gateway, you can send an email, so that's pretty cool. Um, so, uh, anyway, all this stuff is going to go back in the uh, EMP can, uh, just in case the screens are really driving my camera crazy here, aren't they? Um, but all this is going to go back in the EMP can, and uh, delighted that I've got that working. Really, I'm probably not going to run, you know, FT8 if, if I'm in a disaster situation. What I'm probably going to do is I'm gonna to wanna to send an email to get in touch with family. So um, this little six amp hour battery will do the job. And uh, I've also, um, I've got solar panels and stuff over here too. So if I really needed to run this for a while, I've got a solar charge controller in that EMP kit um, that I could pull out and connect up to the solar panel. It's a great uh, inexpensive setup. Uh, in terms of the computer and things. The 891 is expensive. But the 891 is a great radio. So um, I'm going to probably, while I've got this working, I'm going to write all these settings down uh, on some note cards and put them in that EMP can with everything. And um, But uh, this is proof that, yes, you can run uh, RMS Express on Linux without using Windows and using an FT891, as long as you've got a sound card, because the, the 891 doesn't include a sound card. But um, if you've got a printer cable and a couple of USB ports, uh, you can use the 891 to send emails off of a Linux laptop. So uh, this is KO4DFC. Hope this is helpful. And uh, you know, hope the settings I showed are helpful for any uh, Yaesu 891 users. And um, your radio may be different, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's part of the hobby, right? So you learn your radio, you learn what setups work for you. This one works for me for an emergency setup. So I hope that's helpful to anybody who's trying to uh, get, get something working in their shack. If, if you're trying to do a, an inexpensive shack computer setup. So, all right. Thanks everybody. And, uh, yeah, I will catch you uh, down the log, as they say. So KO4DFC, thanks for watching.